Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today, finally, I'm checking out Ryzen 5. Sorry it took so long, guys, but uh, these took a while to trickle down to New Zealand. But hey, they're finally here, so I can finally check them out. And I'm going to be working my way from the bottom up. So today, we're going to be checking out the Ryzen 5 1400. So this will be a price to price comparison. So I'm gonna be putting it up against the Intel i5-7400 because both of these cards are almost at the same price at Playtech in New Zealand. So let's uh, talk about the CPUs then. So the Ryzen 5 1400 is a four core, eight thread CPU, 3.2 gigahertz base clock with a 3.4 gigahertz turbo clock and it is unlocked like all Ryzen CPUs so you can overclock it. The i5-7400 is a 4 core 4 thread CPU with a 3 gigahertz base clock and a 3.5 gigahertz turbo clock but it is locked. You cannot overclock this CPU. And in New Zealand uh, the 1400 right now is only five New Zealand dollars more expensive than the 7400. So this is going to be very interesting for those people out there who are wanting to get into that. It's it's still entry level to me, but it's like the really good entry level uh, CPUs. So the 1400 looking very solid there, um, double the amount of threads of the uh, 7400. But as we've seen before. These KB Lake CPUs, even the uh, locked ones, are no slouches, so this should be very, very interesting. Let's talk about the test rigs that I'm testing these CPUs out in. So the Ryzen 5 1400 was tested on the Ryzen 5 test rig I built recently. I'll leave the link to that video down in the description if you want to check it out. So this rig was uh, test rig was built around the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming K7 X370 motherboard, which has been absolutely fantastic. Haven't had any issues with it at all, and I highly recommend that motherboard. I really do like it. Now the KB Lake CPU, the 7400 here, was tested around uh, a new rig that I built. So this is a Z270 rig featuring the ASRock Fatality Gaming K6 motherboard, which is also a fantastic motherboard there. I want to give a huge, huge thank you to uh, Steve over at Hardware Unbox for providing me with that motherboard so I could make these videos for you guys. Uh, Steve's just such a great guy. You, de you definitely want to go over and check out his channel. He does some really, really good videos. So uh, yeah. And uh, of course I wanted to keep it fair, so they're running the exact same G-Skill Ripjaws 4 uh, memory at the same memory speed. All these tests were done with the same memory speed, 2933 MHz. And of course the same GPU, which is the Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1080, my personal GPU. My reason for picking that card, obviously, as you guys, well, most of you guys will know, is because we do not want to see any GPU bottlenecking. So you always want to pair the CPUs you're testing with with the most powerful GPU you have in order to eliminate that issue. Now that we've got all those specs out of the way, uh, let's talk about the actual testing of these two CPUs. So obviously I cannot overclock the 7400 as it's a locked CPU. So all the testing with that was done at its stock speeds, but obviously with that 2933 MHz memory. The Ryzen 5 1400 I also tested at stock speeds. However, because this can overclock, I threw in my OC results also. So this guy only overclocked for me up to 3.8 GHz. Now that's still pretty solid considering where it starts out at. But uh, the Ryzen 7s I tested all managed to get up to 4 GHz. Maybe I just lost the silicon lottery a tiny bit here. But that still is a fairly good overclock coming out of this CPU. Now one other thing I need to add is even though I was using the uh, Wraith Spire cooler with the Ryzen 5 1400, there was no throttling whatsoever. I ran, I stress tested it while well, it was overclocked in IDA 64 for 5 minutes and the highest temperature it went up to was 62 degrees Celsius. That's not an issue at all, that's very very good in terms of temperatures. So yeah, there's no issues with that with either of these G uh, GPUs, CPUs I should say. Getting ahead of myself, RX 500 series on the mind. So without further ado, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform.
and we're back. So very interesting there. When they're set at their stock speeds, the 7400 does pretty solid. It still loses in the productivity, but when it comes to gaming, it does win in some of the tests by a decent margin. However, that all changes when we overclock the Ryzen 5 1400. In productivity then, it does extremely well, and in gaming, it wins or comes a lot closer while it's overclocked. So who wins the benchmarks? I have to give it to the 1400 if you are going to be overclocking, which I highly recommend you do, even if you're a person that's just running the stock cooler, because it's more than good enough to uh, cool this guy, even if you're overclocking. Now, if you're a bit scared or a bit worried about it, um, there's plenty of guides online that will help you do it, but do remember that you will void the warranty, which is a issue some people out there have when overclocking a CPU. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and what do I make of these two CPUs? So as I said earlier, the Ryzen 5 1400 costs $5 more in New Zealand right now at Playtech than the i5-7400. And I think it's much better value as well. You're getting a 4-core, 8-thread unlocked CPU for that $5 extra over the 7400 with 4-core, four 4-thread, four and being locked. So, just on paper, it seems like the 1400 is the much better deal. And then when we actually test it out, um, at its stock speeds, the, the 7400 does a good job. Very good job, uh, compared to the 1400. But once you start overclocking this Ryzen 5, it really starts to take off, as we saw. So, with that in mind, I would say I have to recommend the Ryzen 5 1400 but what I would say is that you definitely want to overclock this CPU to get the most out of it. Now you definitely can with the stock cooler it comes with, so that's not a worry. And I would really um, advise you guys to pair it with a very good motherboard. Do your research. You don't need to get an X370. You certainly don't. You can get a B350 for sure. And that's what I would recommend. Do your research. Find a very, very good B350 that you like, that has the features you want and then get this Ryzen 5 1400, pair it with that, and then overclock it as high as you can go. 3.8, 3.9 gigahertz should be very solid, and it's going to be very good. I also think, as we move forward, uh, these Ryzen 5 CPUs, or the Ryzen CPUs in general, will do better and better in terms of gaming performance. It's just a very new, very new architecture, and there's a lot of things um, for developers to get used to, I suppose you would say. So yeah, this is the CPU I would recommend. The Ryzen 5 1400 is exceptional value, and I really do like this CPU. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.